Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering what are wireless LANs, what is IEEE 802.11 standard, and I will explain architecture, services, and frame format of IEEE 802.11 standard, and also I will explain what is static channel allocation and dynamic channel allocation. I will explain all these topics in detail. Guys, whatever the topics that I am going to cover in this video, I will provide all those topics and the timings in description. Guys, I have uploaded complete computer network subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. It first I will explain what are wireless local area networks. Shortly we call it as wireless LANs, or you can also call it as WLAN. Guys, for example, there is college building. This college building is considered as one local area network. This college building. There are so many floors, and each floor contains so many devices like laptops, tablets, smartphones, etc. All the devices in college building are connected to college Wi-Fi wirelessly, and all devices will communicate each other. As all devices in college building are connected to college Wi-Fi wirelessly, we call it as wireless local area network. And whenever one device sends data to other device wirelessly, data will be transferred in the form of radio waves. So a wireless local area network is a network that connects the devices without using wires. Instead of cables, it uses radio waves to send and receive data. It allows devices like laptops, smartphones, and tablets to communicate wirelessly within a limited area, such as home, office, or school. As for example, in school, by using router, all devices will connect to Wi-Fi network, and they will communicate each other. For example, in my house. I will connect my mobile, iPad, and laptop to home Wi-Fi. As all devices are connected to Wi-Fi network wirelessly, this is another example of wireless LAN. Next, I will explain futures of WLAN. And the first one is no physical cables. Guys, in wireless LANs, devices can communicate wirelessly. Whenever one device sends data to other device wirelessly, then data will be transferred in the form of radio waves. So there is no need of any physical cables. And second one is portable. As all devices are not connected by using cables, we can easily move our devices. Still, devices are connected to network. And third one is scalable. In wireless local area networks, we can easily add new devices to our network. For example, simply I will connect my new mobile to Wi-Fi and I will use. And next feature is IEEE 802.11 standards. Standards are nothing but rules. As all devices are communicating wirelessly because of the standard. Next, I will explain. Types of WLANs. And the first one is infrastructure mode WLAN. As for example, if you consider internet in houses, all devices are connected to router wirelessly in order to access internet. And whereas this router is connected to internet, there is inside router there will be access point. Access point is nothing but it is like hardware part. So access point is the point where devices are connected to network wirelessly. So in infrastructure mode, devices will not communicate to each other directly. Instead, devices are connected to access point in order to access network. And second one is ad hoc mode. Guys, in ad hoc mode, there will not be any access point like router. Devices will communicate to each other directly without any access point. And last one is mesh wireless LAN. Guys, in mesh WLAN, there will not be single access point. There will be multiple access points. As there are multiple access points, it will extend network coverage. So it will cover large area. These are three types of WLANs. Next, I will explain components of WLANs. And the first one is wireless access point. Access points are present in devices like routers and switches. All devices are connected to network by using this access point. And second component is wireless network interface card. By using this hardware part, we can connect to network directly. We call that hardware part as wireless NIC. For example, if you consider laptops, by using laptop, we can connect to network wirelessly. It is happened because of NIC card, and third one is router. So router is a device. By using router, we can connect to network wirelessly. And fourth one is clients. Any devices that are connected to wireless networks is known as clients. Devices like laptops, smartphones, and tablets that are connected to wireless network. So these devices are examples of clients. This is all about wireless local area network. Next, I will explain what is IEEE 802.11 standard. Guys, IEEE stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. This institute will create standards. Standards are nothing but rules. 
So I triply created i0 2.0 standard that is nothing but rules. By using this standard, devices can communicate each other in wireless networks. Yes, for example, if you consider devices like laptops, smartphones, and tablets, all these devices will work by using Wi Fi based on the standard. As Wi Fi will work based on standard, I triple E802.11 standard. So, I triple E802.11 is the standard for wireless lens, mainly for Wi Fi, which allow devices like laptops, smartphones, and tablets to connect to network without cables. Devices can communicate with each other wirelessly without cables. This IEEE 802.11 standard contains two types of architectures. And the first one is infrastructure mode, and the second one is ad hoc mode. It first of all explain what is infrastructure mode. By using infrastructure mode, devices can connect to internet by using access point. This mode uses a central access point to connect to devices. Devices communicate through access point, not directly with each other, used in homes and offices. Thus, for example, if you consider your home Wi Fi, as routers contain access point, by using the taxis point, devices can connect to internet. This is architecture of infrastructure mode. As yes, for example, there are various kinds of devices like laptops, computers, tablets, mobiles, etc. And there is internet. Now I want to connect my device to internet. So we can connect a device to internet by using router. For example, my router contains two access points. One is access point 1 and next one is access point 2. So devices like routers contain access point. By using that access point, we can connect our device to internet. Because devices that are connected to network is known as stations. So stations are nothing but devices. These are components of infrastructure mode. And the first one is AP. Yes, AP stands for access point. It is the point where devices are connected to network, like internet. And stations are nothing but devices that are connected to network. Yes, BSS stands for basic service set. Router contains two access points. For example, if you consider this mobile and tablet, these two devices are connected to single access point, that is access point 2. So, devices that are connected to single access point is known as VWS. And next one is EWS, where EWS stands for Extended Service Set, network that contains multiple access points. We call that network as EWS, where this network contains multiple access points. So, this network will cover large area. And last one is DS, where DS stands for Distribution Systems. If we establish connection between two access points by using cable, then we call that network as distribution system. This is all about infrastructure based architecture of IEEE 802.11 standard. Next architecture is ad hoc mode architecture. Thus, in this architecture, devices will communicate each other directly. There will not be any access point. For example, there is station 1, 2, 3. Stations are nothing but devices that are connected to network. All these devices will communicate each other directly without any access point. Next, I will explain services provided by IEEE 802.11 standard. Here, this standard will provide two types of services. And the first one is station services, and second one is distribution services. Stations are nothing but devices like laptops and mobiles. This standard will provide various kinds of services to devices. And the first one is authentication service. Yes, authentication means verifying device. Yes, for example, by using my mobile, I want to connect to Wi Fi. So, what I will do is I will enter password. If my password is correct, then authentication is successful. I can access internet. If my password is wrong, then my device will be disconnected from network. This is known as de authentication. And third service is privacy. Because whenever we transfer data in network, my data is converted into unreadable format. Even though if a hacker acts our data, he cannot read our data. Because data is in unreadable format. And last service is data delivery service. By using this standard, sender can correctly send data to receiver in wireless network. These are four station services. And second one is distribution services. Where the services are used for managing Wi-Fi network. And the first one is association. If we connect our device to access point, then we call it as association. Because if we move our device from one access point to other access point, then we call it as reassociation. And whenever we take our device far away from network, then our Wi-Fi will be disconnected. We call it as disassociation. If we transfer our data from one access point to other access point, then it is known as distribution. And next one is integration. If we connect our Wi-Fi to any wide network, then we consider it as integration. These are various distribution services. Next, I will explain 
फ्रेम फार्मेट ऑफ आई थ्रिपल एट नाट टू पॉइंट डबल वन स्टैंडर्ड लेट्स फॉर एग्जांपल आई वांट टू सेंड मैसेज हेलो टू माय फ्रेंड सो व्हेन एवर आई सेंड हेलो टू माय फ्रेंड माय डेटा इज नॉट ट्रांसफर डायरेक्टली इनसेड माय डेटा इज प्लेस्ड इन फ्रेम एंड दिस कंप्लीट फ्रेम इज ट्रांसफर टू रिसीवर दिस फ्रेम इज लाइक पैकिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंडिंग आवर डेटा डायरेक्टली वी विल पैक आवर डेटा इन फ्रेम एंड देन वी विल सेंड आवर एंटायर फ्रेम टू रिसीवर व्हाटएवर द डेटा वी प्लेस इन फ्रेम वी कॉल द डेटा एज पेलोड so payload is nothing but actual data being transmitted along with our actual data we will include so many things in frame and the first one is frame control that's frame control size is 2 bytes that is nothing but 16 bits so by using frame control network will identify that what kind of data that is present inside the frame so frame control helps in identifying what kind of data is being sent and second field is duration how much time particular device will use communication channel in order to transfer data the time is included in duration field so by saying duration field device will understand that how long particular device will use communication channel in that time other device will not use that channel so collisions will not occur duration field is also 2 bytes and next field is address field guys if you want to identify any person we can identify person by using other number in same way If you want to identify any device in network, we can identify device by using MAC address. Address field is six bytes, so address field contains sender MAC address, receiver MAC address, and as well as access point MAC address. Based on these addresses, devices can communicate in network. Sender MAC address two bytes, receiver MAC address two bytes, and access point MAC address two bytes. Total six bytes. And next field is sequence control. Guys, by using sequence control. we can send our data in sequence manner and sequence control can identify duplicate values actual data which we are sending is known as payload for example i am sending message hello so message hello is considered as payload and last field in frame is frame check sequence we also call it as checksum this field is 4 bytes by using this field we can identify errors in our data next i will explain what is static channel allocation and dynamic channel allocation that channel is nothing but cable for example all computers will communicate to each other in network by using single cable so we call this single cable as channel guys before explaining what is static and dynamic channel allocation it first you need to know what is bandwidth maximum amount of data that can be transmitted in a network in a given time is known as bandwidth for example this network will support 1000 mbps that mean 1000 mb of data can be transmitted per second in this channel so 1000 mb per second is known as bandwidth at first i will explain what is static channel allocation in static channel allocation total bandwidth is divided into fixed channels and each user will get one channel for communication for example entire channel bandwidth is 1000 mb per second so each user will get 100 mb per second bandwidth in this bandwidth users can communicate in network even though if users use or don't use that bandwidth that bandwidth is available to users fdma and tdma both are examples of static channel allocation for example if you consider fdma where fdma stands for frequency division multiple axis name itself says frequency division so entire frequency is divided into smaller frequencies and each user will get one small frequency in the small frequency users can communicate and whereas tdma stands for time division multiple axis name itself says time division entire time in network is divided into smaller time slots and each user is given one time slot in that particular time slot device can communicate thus in static channel allocation we will pre assign fixed bandwidth to each user if user use that bandwidth then there is no problem but if user don't use that bandwidth then this bandwidth is wasted so static channel allocation is suitable only for smaller networks if you are using larger networks then giving fixed the bandwidth to each and every device is very tough so if you are using larger network with many devices then you can use dynamic channel allocation in dynamic channel allocation channels are not pre assigned they are given only whenever user need them for example this user want to send data only at that time this user is given bandwidth as we are not pre assigning fixed channels device will send data only whenever they need 
so bandwidth will not be wasted dynamic channel allocation is used by csma ca protocol where csma stands for carrier sense multiple axis and ca stands for collision avoidance this protocol will use dynamic channel allocation if you consider present 4g and 5g networks these networks are using dynamic channel allocation so dynamic channel allocation is suitable for larger networks like mobile networks internet and modern wireless communications next i will explain difference between static channel allocation and dynamic channel allocation in static channel allocation channels are fixed and pre assigned to users it is suitable for smaller networks and whereas in dynamic channel allocation channels are not pre assigned channels are given to users only whenever they need it is suitable for larger networks in static channel allocation as we are giving fixed channel to each user if user don't use a channel then bandwidth will be wasted so resources are wasted if they are unused in dynamic channel allocation only whenever device want to communicate only at that time will give bandwidth so there will not be any resource wastage collisions will not occur in static channel allocation and whereas in dynamic channel allocation collisions will occur and these collisions can be handled by using various protocols static channel allocation is used in ftma and tdma protocols and whereas dynamic channel allocation is used in 4g 5g wifi and internet